F10 in the Simpson Desert. We missed that last night when we came through. So here's Channel 10. There you go. So I'm going to stop here, stick my sand flag on, and uh, on we go. It's depending which country you're in, uh, about 10 past 9 or 10 to 9, 22 9. Sand flag on, and I can either go that way, two kilometres, and then over Big Red, or I can go this way, over Little Red, two kilometres that way, and then just keep going. So that's what I'm going to do, the latter. But the tyres are still deflated from last night, so they're at about 25, 26. I'll just see how I can go quite a bit lower than that, um, if need be. But the idea is going to be nice and gentle. Hopefully not too much stuff flies, flies around. red done and that was not low range that was just that was just chilling nice one down all right so big red's behind me and i'm uh so yeah went went little red didn't go up. but there's no one uh, no one there at all i've just seen two cars go ahead of me so that's kind of good i heard them on the, the uhf so that's good um, so this is our first little challenge and kind of going to be a little bit interesting. So low range is in. I'm going to hold it so it doesn't go past fourth gear. top and uh, hope there's no one else coming but with the guys being ahead of me I'm pretty confident that uh, I can still hear them and so if they do come across someone I will hear that so that's kind of a kind of good you can kind of see already looking at my little uh, scan gauge that sitting here at 30 kilometers an hour at the moment but I'm also sitting at about uh, close to 20 litres to 100k so you certainly chew through a little bit more fuel as you go along. This one's a sort of longer stretchy so I'm actually going to take it out of low range. About here, there's no one behind me. So disengage low, it's off. So there's a couple of cars ahead of me heading the same direction but just uh, had radio that um, there's a group of four coming east. 
cars and they've kindly offered to pull over while the three cars go past them so that's nice so still in high range I'm not in low range so it seems to be working okay so far um, just, just around momentum and keeping the wheels rolling and um, working sort of massaging the wheels through the little ruts so I've got these guys in sight now so I should be able to get past them okay descents that you've got to do so just remember that I'm not in low range I'm just in normal high range but it becomes quite quite bumpy you can't really go down faster than that well but you can if you're a complete idiot um, but I just heard the people ahead of me um, there's a couple I think two cars and uh, the chap just said to the partner I guess behind him saying oh you're gonna have to give the give the berries of this one now I'm assuming that it's this one coming up here so I'm gonna video it and just see what happens whether I'm gonna backtrack go back into uh, low range but yeah it looks a little bit steeper than any of the other ones I've done so far so I'm in second high during the rains in between now and nine years before. Make it uh, interesting for the first cars to come through here. But obviously it's a bit of a floodplain, you can see a lot more um, trees and what have you, and you know, right through the left and the right of me. One of the uh, factors with the driving conditions is the time of day that you leave, so the the earlier you leave, the more dew there still is on the sand, so it's not as powdery and a little bit, a little bit heavier, and so driving through it's a little bit easier. But uh, when you uh, leave later, it gets powdery and it gets a little bit more challenging. So I don't know whether this might be. This is the Air Creek. Oh, okay, so this is where the kids and us had uh, had lunch. At times, I'm just going to swing the camera around a bit. We had lunch sitting right here. So I need to get out and take a photo, as is my want. So it's Lake Air. Sorry. <laughs> so this is Air Creek, where I think it was pretty well here that we had lunch on our previous failed attempt. And I'm going to zoom in a bit over this way because there actually is still water there. So that's very recent water, lots of bird life. Um, but anyway, happy days, Air Creek. 
So the fun thing here is, in here creek, is that I may actually have to engage low range to get up out of here on the other side. It looks a little bit gnarly, but uh, let's see how we go. So that's where I came out of. This is where I'm going. So I might just go nice and easy first gear. I don't think I'm going to need low range. That was all right, that was easy. The uh, interesting thing with that um, Air Creek little crossing we had there is that if memory serves we had lunch at Air Creek and it wasn't far after lunch. A bit of concentration here. It wasn't far after lunch that uh, we turned over, so that must have been about one, two o'clock or so. And uh, where I am at the moment, it's 9.38, so I suspect I've got a much greater chance of uh, making it to Popal being potentially, I don't know, three hours ahead of what we were nine years ago. The smell of success. So this here looks interesting. Give it a little bit going up. That's second high. First high. Of, uh, lots of anger from the car. She whiz, does not disappoint. as to the traction here and hopefully don't make a dick of myself here but uh, I'm just going to go really slowly up here just in first gear really nice and easy I hope to demonstrate the type of traction that you can have not doing too much so a little bit of right foot not pushing it not over revving oh that's really not that hard nice and easy rather than bouncing the crap out of the car and getting airborne and doing all sorts of damage that was actually quite gentle I just uh, pulled over I think I've done about 30k since uh, the bottom of Big Red if you will but I uh, had something banging along around in the back so uh, it's my uh, vertical grill hot plate that was banging between the cupboard and the um, fridge so I've just put a bit of a mat there just to dull the annoyance but yes under the shade of a cooler bar tree or well this, this tree um, making pretty good progress I'm pretty happy it's it's good I'm pleased onwards westwards these are kind of the annoying parts where you've got in between the crests you've got these swales but they're uh, soft and so they're up and down up and down up and down like this and you really can't do what I'm doing 20 kilometers an hour if I'm lucky um, in first gear it kind of slows you down a tad there's other times you're up to 40 to 50 k's up, so. I've lost sight of the two cars that are in front of me, so they must be uh, herbing along, but that's okay. It's not a race. It's my own race, I just gotta get there. entering the Mungathiri National Park so to camp here you need a um, permit which I have costs all of seven dollars and just gonna look at the Hema how far we've gone uh, you know what no that can't be right theoretically I'm about halfway no that can't be right we'll see we'll see just recenter it all right here we go National Park Simpson Desert Region do it.
yeah, mate. G'day, you're the third of third, Craig? Uh, no, I'm one of one, but I know there's two behind me. Oh, there's a couple behind me. Um, I'm not sure how far back. I haven't heard them for a little bit, but in the Raptors, yeah. two yeah, flying along. Um, I've got two behind me, but okay. we're, we're super spread out. Oh, okay. There'll be a like, F-150 Raptor with the caravan behind that as well. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you come from Popal? Yeah. Well, how long did it take you from this morning? Oh, we didn't come from this morning. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, nice. Okay. Sweet. Good stuff. Cheers. So, I'm going to do this to get a bit of an idea what it's like in here. the silver stick and turn you around so you can kind of see what I'm seeing I guess um, try and hold it steady there or not evidently I don't know this is kind of the view that I get I I can't do that uh, dune holding it already radioed in and when you hear nothing for a few minutes pretty well means that there's no one within earshot of you which is at least three or four kilometres <coughs> so that's a good thing uh, yes I'm going to knock it down to third gear in a sec Whew. Probably the hardest one I reckon I've done. There was just a little bit more slippage than what I anticipated. And had to drop it all the way down to first high range, but got up there. So I'm keeping my window open because I like the fresh air in here, but uh, it's actually warming up quite a bit. The sun, as you can see. Um, but uh, yeah, no air conditioning. It's 22 outside, um, which is yeah, all right. It's very pleasant, but there's no breeze, or pretty well no breeze, and um, beautiful conditions. That was cool as. to come up that uh, that crest there was a call came over there's another guy coming over and uh, so I saw him had a visual pretty quickly and um, pulled up next to him was a young kid with his dad on his L plates learning the hard way bloody good to see nice nice example
salt pans here, I say. Moist, you crunch right through, and it'd be like spag bolt, it'd be just absolute mess. All kinds of trouble. One thing I don't think I mentioned was that while this car is, no, it's a lovely car, I love it, love my car. You know what I do. Um, it's not new, it's, <laughs> it's 13 years old, so. That said, it's got a couple of sort of really nice things about it. Not just a twin turbo V8 diesel, but it's got um, stability control stuff. Now the issue with that is, what that does is that it's sort of, it's like a traction control. When it senses that your wheels are starting to spin, it sort of backs them off a little bit. Now that's okay under normal conditions, but out here, when you're trying to contain, maintain your momentum, you need to actually keep the wheels spinning. Sometimes that means that it gets a little bit manky, but you've got to turn the stability control off. In my mind, that's just what I do. Is what you don't want to do is when you're just about to reach the top and you're going to give it a little bit more pedal, a bit more right foot, you do not want it to stop spinning. You want it to keep spinning, keep the momentum going. So that's that one. But uh, secondly, this is a real wow. This is a real soft one. This is going to be fun getting up. Anyway, um, the other thing is I've actually, and I actually don't know the difference. I haven't really noticed much difference, but it does have a centre diff lock. So it's not a diff lock where it locks the front or the back differentials. It locks the front and the back together, so they rotate at the same time. Which theoretically, I'm sure someone will be able to YouTube. It gives you better contraction, uh, <laughs> contraction. It gives you contraction, so hopefully I'm not too dilated. Um, gives you better traction um, and balances that traction out between the front and the rear. Theoretically, that's that's a good thing. So I've just turned that on to see whether it makes any difference. I think the uh, turning the vehicle stability control off the VSC is probably more beneficial. But then if you had front and rear diff lockers in this scenario they'd actually if you got a little bit stuck that would actually be really good because it makes sure that the wheels on the left hand side and the right hand side whether the front and back are locked together so if one gets airborne the other one will keep turning as opposed to having the one in the airborne spinning and the other one doing nothing so i think diff lockers are a good thing in the front and the rear in the middle meh but you know what i've turned it on the little things on on the dash I feel better. I feel more of a man. No, that's a lie. I don't. I don't. Anyway, nearly uh, it's 12:30 somewhere. 10 past 12 here, I think. 10 past 12. So, and geez, I've made really good time. So I'm guessing I'm probably I don't know. I'm going to call an hour. I reckon I'll be there in about an hour and a half. So theoretically, about depending which clock I go on. Clock on the dash is 12:12. 12, 12, so. Hour and a half will make it about uh, what's that? Uh, whatever that is, one twenty, one one forty-two. So let's just see whether I'm right. One forty-two. Let's make it. Let's round it off at two o'clock. Theoretically, I should be at Popal Corner. So that would make it. I think I'll have to check, but I think it'll make it about six hours. I haven't had a break, but I'm not particularly hungry because young Andrew set me off with a fantastic bacon and eggs breakfast um, so that was good that was actually good because it was hearty um, my belly feels full um, I've got plenty of energy I've been uh, keep me hydrated don't you worry I'll keep on there you go you happy okay pop quiz middle of the Simpson desert um, what's my altitude What's my altitude? Simpson Desert. I don't know. Hard to tell. Well, at this exact point in time, my altitude, so how far above sea level I am, is 26 metres above sea level. That's not very high. It's not very high at all. 26 metres, jeez. 
it's like a small high-rise building. So I'm still near these uh, salt pans and I'm thinking to myself, uh, well as I said it's like some countries it'll be 1223 and other countries it'll be 1251 or 53. Um, but I'm thinking I might actually stop, have a bit of a break, have a bit of a lunch. Um, I was going to go all the way, but I think it just looks so nice that I think I'm actually going to throw the drone up, up into the air and just see, well, check whether the batteries are charged up. If they're not charged up, I'm going to stick the thing on charge while I'm driving. Uh, if they are charged up, I'm going to set it up and just see what it looks like. Uh, from down here on planet Earth. Uh, here's somewhere I can pull up. Yeah, baby. Perfecto. Yeah, baby. Done. Okay, so decided, you know, plans change. That's what happens. So somewhere it's one o'clock. It could be here. It could also be 1.30. So I've had lunch, just pulled over a little little spot here, had lunch. Um, threw the um, drone up in the air, took a little bit of footage, but there's a couple of little funny things that if you're not logged in, it restricts your height, your altitude to 30 meters. So I'm gonna have to maybe try and work that out tonight. Um, uh, anyway, I got a little bit of footage from 30 meters, um, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to uh, keep going west. Go west. The uh, kind of interesting thing at the moment here is that the dune formations are much shallower, so they're not as high as they were previously. So up to a couple of kilometers ago. So we're sort of a like relatively flat section, despite what the camera might look like. Previously, it was like long, you know, up to a kilometre in the middle of the swales, and then you'd have a fairly high um, dune face that you'd have to run up here. At the moment, it's kind of like it's, this has been going on for probably two kilometres or so. So there's no real sand dunes. It's just like you know, little hillocks like this. Woo! So kind of interesting. I'm not sure whether this is how it continues, but let's see what happens over the next hill. Yep, pretty well, more of the same. So kind of interesting. Now, I think I might be wrong, but there was a, well, there was a signpost up there, where there were two poles where a signpost would have been, uh, and I think I'm in the Northern Territory. That's correct. The Northern Territory. I think I'm in the Northern Territory. So at one point as you're going, it's, always, it's not exactly due east. You kind of go ever so slightly north, uh, sorry, west. Ever so slightly northwest as you're coming across the Simpson. And you cross over the, well, this is actually, I'm gonna stop and go have a bit of a look at this in a sec, but you, uh, you cross over the border into Northern Territory, and then you, then you, at some point, somewhere down there, you end up taking a, a left that takes you down to Popal Corner. But uh, 
Right now I'm going to turn the camera around because there's this amazing expanse of salt plains. Check this out. Wow. Stop it. It's crazy. So you right now, I ain't deviating off that track. <laughs> no way. Alrighty then. Let's do this. sinking into anything, so that's probably a good sign. But you can see it's actually still quite moist under there. point it's Pokemon Corner to the left uh, if I go straight you need the Northern Territory Desert Parks Pass which I do not have so quick photo of uh, my car next to Pokemon Corner sign um, Hay River Track is to the right Pokemon Corner to the left God knows what straight ahead so let's have a look at uh, getting a little Pick, I reckon. A little pick. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the memory serves. I said I'd get to Pope Corner at about two o'clock. I think. Scroll back and see. Twenty to two now. By that clock. Uh, by that clock, it's only twenty to. Well, hang on, what? Yeah, it's the same time. Oh, okay, so. Maybe I've gone through a different time zone or something again, so uh, yeah, 20 to 2, UHF 10 in the Simpson Desert, the sign says, that's pretty cool, so at the moment I'm actually running really rough over some corrugations, um, running parallel alongside this great big watercourse, this salt, salt pan, I guess it is, because it's white, I mean, you know, if it's white it has to be salt. So this is really, really cool. I'm going to spin it around. does not look like a beautiful beach out there, eh? How's that? Surely! Gonna do, do some surfing or something, eh? Probably not. Alrighty! Coming to the end of this salt pan. What does the sign say? French line, that way. Apradina, something, something, something. Dalhousie Springs, that way. Hopal Corner that way. In other words, don't go the other way! So, to my left now is the Warburton Crossing. To my right, the way we came back, where we came, was the Birdsville. 
and uh, we are going to Pope El Corner. Whoop! <laughs> Excitement! Whoop! Mission accomplished. Purple corner. Right now I'm in South Australia. I think I'll uh, head over to Queensland. Done. Uh, hang on. I forgot something in Northern Territory. Done. Back to South Australia. Done. How good is that? Tri State border. Fantastic. Young couple here in their uh, two patrol, what are they called? Rangers, Raptors. They just came smashing past me an hour or two ago. They're here, they're here and they're gone. So, right now, at this moment in time, I am on my own, gonna, about to run around naked for about half an hour. Sunbird, can't do that. Irresponsible. Totally irresponsible. So, there they go, they're off. Two dudes there. I'm down here and a uh, little bit of a look around. I'm just not sure what this post is here. Like, what's the point of this? I don't quite get it. It's just sort of like a concrete post. Maybe it's some plastic shit. No, it is. It's plastic sort of stuff. Like, you know, like a monolith in the middle of nowhere. Uh, aliens, that'd be it. I'm gonna have a bit of a uh, quick little bit of a look around here, a bit of a drive around. Looks like there's um, oh, a bit more Zolio sending a message or receiving a message. I'll check that in a sec. Um, there's obviously you can camp around here, but I'm guessing that there's quite a few options. Why oh, is that happening? That's why, right. Um, so I might just have a bit of a look around, see what, uh, what the go is, where I might want to pitch my little abode for the night. With some luck, I might actually find some, uh, some firewood. I reckon I will. I reckon I'll find some firewood. Gather it up. And a bit of a, a bit of a chill out fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 